What's up guys, Ben here, bringing you another video today. Uh, my voice is still chalk, so apologies there. I, I'm feeling a lot better after being just like, holy sec this weekend. But wanted to bring you a Q&A video. We do these like once a month. So I tweet out yesterday, uh, Sunday, to get some questions, some great responses. We're gonna dive through those right now, get you the answers you guys are looking for. Let's get it. So first off, we have a question from Shiki, uh, my friend Shiki, who I've known for a long time. Do you plan on keeping the baldness because Preston, aka Priesta, and I think you should continue rocking? It. I think I'm gonna keep it like buzz short. I'll probably grow it out another like half an inch and then just sort of like kind of fade it on the sides once I get in a good spot. So you'll see the fade probably before major four. Um, but I'm gonna keep it short. I think everybody likes my hair short. I've been told it's good short. So we're gonna keep it going, I think, through the summer and sort of see how things go. We got my guy CDL pal coming in with a where do you see the CDL in five to ten years? Well, ten years is a long time. I think for our uh, Call of Duty League. Um, and just sort of Call of Duty competitive esports in general. I think a couple of key things I see development on in the next sort of five to 10 years. One is, I think there's gonna be an eventual alignment of sort of the lower level of Call of Duty esports. I'm talking about the high school and college level. I think eventually that'll be folded into sort of the same path to pro now you see with challengers. So you got sort of that academic sort of scholastic level that feeds into sort of challengers, challengers lead that feeds into the CDL. I think that's going to happen sooner rather than later in this sort of time period. The second thing is sort of what happens with the alignment of Microsoft purchasing Activision and what does Microsoft then do with the overall thought process of all of their esports strategy? I could see sort of the CDL kind of continuing in a version of this form, maybe uh, evolving more into what we see with the HTS. So it becomes more of a partner program and obviously the perks for being a partner are quite good in terms of revenue share, in-game monetization, all of those things. You have a component where there's sort of a feeder of some teams that can qualify through it and compete at tournaments. I think beyond that as well, we see the return of sort of MLG style events where you see multiple Microsoft IP, obviously with the Activision acquisition all happening. So that's kind of what I see in five to 10 years. Esports though is growing so fast, like trying to predict out 10 years is just super difficult, but I think those are a couple of things I can see happening. Next up, we got It's Me J. Do you think competitive COD should be something like CSGO? That way we have one game with multiple updates to keep it fresh with new maps, new guns, etc. So a lot of people have been saying this for a while. Um, you know, there's sort of an attempt, especially in the Asian market with Call of Duty Online, and that didn't really succeed. I think it would be great to be sort of what CSGO is, which is a cheaper free-to-play game. You know, you obviously want to tap in that PC audience and just keep iteration. The problem is for Activision right now is they make a lot of money on the yearly sales of Call of Duty at 60 plus, you know, 70 for deluxe, et cetera, et cetera, price point. So I don't see them going away from that business model because they're leaving a lot of money on the table. Yes, it would be good for competitive COD. Do I see it happening? No. Hawk asks, what do you think is holding LA Thieves back from being a championship team this year? I mean, it's the same problem as last year when they weren't winning. It's a search. Uh, I mean, they're a great respawn team. They've got a good map pool. But when it comes to s &D, they do a good job at times getting first bloods. They get first blood at 53% of the time. I just looked it up. which is above the average. But they're only winning 65% of those rounds. They're just really not good. These situational 4v3s, bomb down 4v4 retakes, bomb down 4v3s. They're just not good at using their man advantage and closing out rounds. This is a problem they had at the beginning of last year. And they fixed it at the tail end of the season and sort of round it into the team that won back-to-backs, uh, including champs. So I could see them doing it again, but that's sort of the biggest thing is they need to clean up that situational search play if they want to make it deep in a tournament again. I think last major was a little bit of a fluke in terms of the way that they lost. Obviously, they had they got smoked by FaZe and then you know, tough bounces and loses bracket with a choke into Vegas. I could see them, you know, overall... Uh, playing better in the next couple of majors, but they got to improve that start situational play. Interesting question from Dotsy. Do you think obviously should bring an S and D coach like Bose or even someone like Karma to be a general coach? Uh, I mean, it really depends. I think Damon, AKA Karma did come on the flank. And I think he even said it on sets watch party during the major, he would love to come in, but Damon was also drinking that day. So I don't know how serious he was. And I'm sure Bose would be interested too. I think more, uh, thoughtfulness in their camp more people to kind of help with practice is always probably a good ad on that side i think their search game is gotten better but it's still not the level that they want um i think if they want to win championships and win consistently they need to get better search they need to get better control so i do think they should bring in a couple more people to add to the coaching staff do i think they're going to do it i'm not really sure uh, we know their thoughts on coaches. Next up, we have a remix asking, how would you change the format for the CDL? So a couple of things. First off, I would move all of these online qualifier matches to a LAN, but 
that's a conversation for another day and it's a cost thing assuming that we have the same sort of budget constraints we have now with the cdl in terms of like the amount of money they could spend but the biggest thing i would do is double the amount of matches in between stages from five to ten now this would mean that not every match should be streamed on the mainstream which is okay simultaneous matches are not bad i think the extra matches would be helpful to teams in terms of practice and data um i think people can kind of consume matches however they want i can understand from a cdl standpoint that this kind of gets rid of sort of the single track mindset and kind of fragments viewership um but with the advent of watch parties i think you definitely like can get around that just because people can kind of choose how they want to consume and you're still going to count all those numbers anyway and the other thing i would do as well is i would add probably one more pro-am to the season one in the beginning and one at the middle i like major one being a pro-am adding another one in the middle would be great too see how amateurs stack up against pros those would be like easy changes you can do without really adding additional budget um, to make things happen next up we got belmonte depressed norris fan probably down bad with how mclaren has been so far in this formula one season if expansion were to happen which orgs would one you'd be personally invested in seeing take part in and two you think would actually want to have the resources to do it there's probably a couple i would think of one is probably complexity i think that would be a really interesting ad i think logistically they'd have to take a spot other than texas so i'm not really sure um how that would happen i think sentinels would be very interesting is an ad as well obviously you've got your sort of traditional esports orgs like liquid and c9 and tsm they would be interested to come in um, but i'm not sure if they have really like interested in doing it i think one org that i could definitely see being attached to the cdl uh at some point uh is team falcons i know that they have a team in europe uh that is competing their, their saudi arabian organizations or players are playing from europe I could see them wanting to get in the CDL. I know that kind of creates sort of a murky political issue, but I could definitely see them as wanting to get in. So I think those are a couple um, that we can see slide in terms of current endemic esports orgs. We had an interesting one from Jay. Last year, everyone was complaining about the competitive integrity of the game because there were no repeat winners. I don't think people complain about the game competitive integrity because of the lack of repeat winners. I think they were complaining about the competitive integrity because the game wasn't good. With us being through three majors now, how does the competitiveness, competitiveness of this game rank against Vanguard and Bocage Grand and Fortress. I would say that this game is more competitive than Vanguard. I think the reason you're seeing a lot of parity is I think we've gotten to the point in the CDL where these teams are being built in sort of correct fashion and the camps are being run in a way to make sure the teams are performing at the correct level. I think it's more of the parity in terms of talent in the league. And yeah, definitely the games uh, are you know easier than say Cold War. I think you'd probably have less parity now uh, if we were playing that game with these teams i do think this game is a bit more competitive um than vanguard that being said we still need a couple of maps and bocage is definitely better than fortress uh next question so marcus comes in with one i've seen a lot on a reddit and social media basically asking you know what is the face stock price crash you have to do with the cod team and you know that uh phase is obviously public list as a company so the way that i believe atlanta esports ventures and atlanta phase works is that it's a run by aev um, and they get money from, I think, the Cox Ventures Fund and Province Inc. and a bunch of other sources. I think as well, people from AEV are on the board of FaZe. But the relationship between FaZe and Atlanta FaZe is purely like a marketing resources um, kind of thing. Social media, stuff like that. So I don't think it really is going to have any impact on sort of the AEV side of things. It only has an impact if you know, Cox or AEV sort of... Uh, their money decides to pull away from esports. Um, obviously, the phase publicly traded uh, uh, adventure is not going well, but I don't think it's going to really have an impact on the Atlanta phase team, keeping in mind that um, I would assume from a, a, a financial standpoint, they know they have a very good team. Their team has been top one or top two now since the beginning of the CDL, and they're going to continue to invest in that team because they basically have a dynasty on their hands. Why would you? Uh, do anything to disrupt that christian correas with a, a fun one here why don't we have an actual hall of fame can we get that moving ben come on i actually agree with christian this actually is a really uh, good idea i don't know why we don't have like a call of duty hall of fame i'm going to uh let me talk to some people at the league and see if they're thinking about this one i think like as a content piece or or, or stuff we do around events to sort of add people to this hall of fame could be really interesting so i'm curious if there's been some actual thought process on the cdl side of making movement on this kip kc uh is up next which games ttk in the cdr has been the best for viewer experience i heard fans love watching vg but not sure that makes what makes it the most fun for the average fan to watch i would say cold war was probably the best to watch for me in terms of ttk and just in general i think a lot of hardcore fans agree i mean last year was fun with sort of the variance in results but i think cold war was like the most rewarding game in terms of ttk and skill it just sucks that we 
I did a kind of the tail end of the COVID era, so we only had three live events and one of them had no fans. So that's sort of my thought there. And a couple of questions from George. You think Ultra can keep up run a form of Hixie? Yeah, I think they continue to be a competitor, but I think teams will, you know, start to once again get back to the um back, get kind of get close to them in terms of control and hard point. And I like Ultra Search, but you know, against phase, that's a sort of interesting matchup. If go see will remain an optic for long term after a string of first land. Oh, so he's asking, so George is asking if Dan Ghosty will remain an optic for a long term. I think he should. I mean, the question for optic is this is obviously all the fans want Sib, all the fans want Pred in the offseason. They get like top two all year. Do you make a change? I think that's an interesting the question and i'm i would say from my end you probably run it back but they may decide to do otherwise so yeah i think dan is definitely helpful to the team i don't think he should go where did new york nysl go if they don't perform at major four new york's in a tricky spot man back-to-back -back bad events they're under pressure now for major four to perform well mind you last time this organization was you know in columbus they did win an event at pro-am last year so yeah i think new york nysl gotta try and get like a top four or something eventually get some momentum for the end of the season if they don't do that i guess they could bring wardy in but i don't really know if that solves their issues next up we have vibe and aka youtube dorkin he messes with illy heavy but do you think that he has lived up to his hype you see all that everyone expects to hit for him from his snd days i think illy has definitely delivered i mean he's a world champion he's won a lot of events i think Inter's in a weird spot in his career right now though because He's gotten dropped from Optic. He's not really playing anything. I don't see him competing in challengers. I don't see him playing cups. So I'm not really sure what he wants to do with his life right now. I think just like everybody we're standing by, because I think he can still be a part of a really good quality CDL team, but he's in sort of a weird kind of crossroads in his career right now. But I think he's accomplished a lot so far since he's been in the league. Only a few more questions left. And next one is from Rhett. Do you think with the events of the recent major that RC stock is going to be an all-time low next year? I mean, he has not been playing great and is now having a hand issue that we really don't know much about. So the hand issue was a swelling that uh, Alex said that he had. And that was the reason why uh, he had to leave mid-series at uh, the major. I do think Alex stock is low and I think his confidence doesn't seem to really be there. I think he's got to try and find that passion again. I know he's in a really tricky team situation, but uh, he's really liked by a lot of players in the community. And I think a lot of people will kind of judge this LAG team on the external issues. So they don't necessarily need a win for Alex Stock to get higher. I just think he needs to play better individually to ensure that like he's got better opportunities next year. Cause I could see him getting on like Seattle if uh, you know, they kind of turn over that roster. Minnesota, you know, if they kind of really go in a different direction, decide to move on from Dylan, maybe get on Optic. Um, there are a lot of different paths here for Alec that get him onto better squads as long as he kind of steps up his performances because right now it's just not there. Next up, we have Moose. Do you think Dash is overrated? He's played with Crim6, Scump, Karma, Former, Formal, Illy, Shotzi, Slasher, and Kenny, but still only has two chips. I think any other player would have won more with those caliber of players IMO. So I talked to Bruce about this when we did our interview a few months ago, and you can check that out on my YouTube channel. I think that Bruce understands that as a player, there were certain things that he wasn't doing inside and outside the game and as to why he doesn't have the number of chips that he should have even with these players. And I think he's recognized that in recent months. And I think that sort of being a better teammate is very much in the front of his mind going forward. So I don't think that Dash is overrated. I think he's a tremendously skilled player. He's got to continue to iterate on the issues that he know he has in terms of being a teammate to win a few more championships. I think he has it in them. Uh, he's just got to continue to execute now. Um, and I think he's become self-aware of sort of the issues that he's had. Finally, we got a fun one from Shredder to close things out. As someone who watched from MW3 to AW, who started back last year during Vanguard, I didn't know who you were. Well, that's fair, because I kind of started after. Eh, I started a little bit during AW, but we'll get to that. For people returning or new, what land are you on the flank and being involved with this scene? I'm sorry if this has been explained a lot. Thanks, Ben. So I got involved in Call of Duty uh, I mean, I started watching during like Black Ops 2 and Ghost. But I got involved. I was like a mod in Clayster's chat in AW. I was working for Optic Intel under uh, Hitch. And then at one point in Black Ops 3, I was an analyst for FaZe, helping them out with Ban and Protect. And then IW, I started at the tail end, sort of managing the uh, FaZe team. Kind of once the trade went down with the United, and I did that for a while. I was doing other stuff for FaZe as well. And I did that pretty much until uh, after the end of Black Ops 4, like once the TDL started. Then I moved over to esports engine, did sort of client services for two years there, and then now I'm doing full-time content. So during that esports engine, since that's when Tommy and I started the flank. Obviously, Tommy and I had known each other when I was managing him and telling him to delete tweet every five seconds. I don't know if you guys remember old school Tommy, but he used to go rogue on Twitter. Anyway, that's how I got involved with the flank because Tom and I 
We're friends from when I was managing him, and then we decided to do a show together, and that is that. So yeah, fun Q and A is always appreciated. Everybody that sent in your questions, we'll do these uh, usually like once a month. So be on the lookout probably for the next one uh, before or after Nature Four. Like if you enjoyed the video, uh, subscribe for more, comment, and let me know what you think. I think this week we're gonna be doing um, a bunch of team preview kind of team review videos as far as some teams have gotten through the midseason on CDL side. So that'll be a like six part series coming to your sub boxes shortly as always guys we'll see you guys on the next one